Welcome to our video about the most iconic quotes of Sigmund Freud. In this video, we will explore some of his most thought-provoking quotes. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the wisdom of Sigmund Freud. The tendency to aggression is an innate, independent, instinctual disposition in man. It constitutes the powerful obstacle to culture. America is a mistake, a giant mistake. It is impossible to overlook the extent to which civilization is built upon a renunciation of instinct. Men are strong, so long as they represent a strong idea, they become powerless when they oppose it. The doctor should be opaque to his patients and, like a mirror, should show them nothing but what is shown to him. The goal towards which the pleasure principle impels us, of becoming happy, is not attainable, yet we may not, nay, cannot, give up the efforts to come nearer to realization of it by some means or other. Civilized society is perpetually menaced with disintegration through this primary hostility of men towards one another. The liberty of the individual is no gift of civilization. It was greatest before there was any civilization. A man who has been the indisputable favorite of his mother keeps for life the feeling of a conqueror. Just as no one can be forced into belief, so no one can be forced into unbelief. What a distressing contrast there is between the radiant intelligence of the child and the feeble mentality of the average adult. Neurosis is the inability to tolerate ambiguity. Everywhere I go, I find that a poet has been there before me. Civilization began the first time an angry person cast a word instead of a rock. Men are more moral than they think, and far more immoral than they can imagine. Whoever loves becomes humble. Those who love have, so to speak, pawned a part of their narcissism. We are never so defenseless against suffering as when we love. What progress we are making! In the Middle Ages they would have burned me. Now they are content with burning my books. Religion is an illusion, and it derives its strength from the fact that it falls in with our instinctual desires. A certain degree of neurosis is of inestimable value as a drive, especially to a psychologist. Neurotics complain of their illness, but they make the most of it, and when it comes to talking it away from them they will defend it like a lioness defending her young. Illusions commend themselves to us because they save us pain and allow us to enjoy pleasure instead. 
we must therefore accept it without complaint when they sometimes collide with a bit of reality against which they are dashed to pieces. Dreams are often most profound when they seem the most crazy. The psychoanalysis of neurotics has taught us to recognize the intimate connection between wetting the bed and the character trait of ambition. Love and work. Work and love, that's all there is. Being entirely honest with oneself is a good exercise. The voice of the intellect is a soft one, but it does not rest until it has gained a hearing. The great question that has never been answered, and which I have not yet been able to answer, despite my 30 years of research into the feminine soul, is what does a woman want? I have found little that is good about human beings on the whole. In my experience most of them are trash, no matter whether they publicly subscribe to this or that ethical doctrine or to none at all. That is something that you cannot say aloud, or perhaps even think. The goal of all life is death. I cannot think of any need in childhood as strong as the need for a father's protection. The ego is not master in its own house. He that has eyes to see and ears to hear may convince himself that no mortal can keep a secret. If his lips are silent, he chatters with his fingertips. Betrayal oozes out of him at every pore. The interpretation of dreams is the royal road to a knowledge of the unconscious activities of the mind. If a man has been his mother's undisputed darling he retains throughout life the triumphant feeling, the confidence in success, which not seldom brings actual success along with it. If you can't do it, give up. Flowers are restful to look at. They have neither emotions nor conflicts. The first human who hurled an insult instead of a stone was the founder of civilization. The mind is like an iceberg, it floats with one-seventh of its bulk above water. The conscious mind may be compared to a fountain playing in the sun and falling back into the great subterranean pool of subconscious from which it rises. Thank you for watching our video on Sigmund Freud's most memorable quotes. We hope you found it enlightening, and that it has inspired you to explore more about the fascinating world of psychoanalysis. As Freud once said, the mind is like an iceberg, it floats with one-seventh of its bulk above water. Let's keep diving deeper into the mysteries of the human psyche. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking content. Thank you for watching.